Good evening. 10 p.m. Good evening on the East Coast, 7 o'clock on the West. Uh, and the rest, this is a new time for us. We are excited. We are expecting some new eyeballs tonight, and we very, very much appreciate it. By the way, it doesn't matter all that much when you watch us, although I'm really pleased you're watching us right now, but you can stream us on the app. There's a million ways to consume content these days. The important part is the content. And this show is different. Number one, this is an opinion show. This is commentary. This is the world through my eyes, and I don't pretend to be neutral. I'm not going to pretend that anything regarding Joe Biden and this situation is normal. Joe, what has he brought us? Well, I like peace and prosperity, right? Peace abroad, prosperity at home. He has brought the absolute opposite. The mainstream media, they are pretending this is normal, and they are buying his excuses. Blame Putin, oh, and blame Trump. And he's doing so much better than Trump. Just ask Joe. <laughs> 20 million Americans had lost their jobs on the last guy. In fact, so many Americans lost their jobs that my predecessor became just the second president in history to leave office with fewer jobs in America than when he took office. This is the most horrendous and dishonest spin from a president perhaps ever. We know what's happening. We're on the verge of a recession. Thanks to him and his policies, things were going great. And the mainstream media pretends that actually even his excuses are normal. You know, he also blames Putin for a lot of things. We, the American people, know Putin. Well, he would not have invaded Ukraine if Donald Trump were still in office. The polls are so obvious, so overwhelming. The people understand it. And they also understand that we would not have lost Afghanistan like Joe did. No way. You think President Trump would have stood for this? Absolutely not. And at the very least, I've actually seen President Trump up close. He never would have been checking his watch at the memorial service. Never. The media didn't even mention that. They cover up for him. They are, quite frankly, despicable. Some of them are individually nice people, but as a group, they are corrosive. And Donald Trump was not wrong when he said, the enemy of the people. Now let's talk about Donald Trump, because you should know this about me. I like him. I like his style. I even like the tweets. And I love the policies, all right? I mean peace and prosperity, and the frankness, the candor, the no-nonsense. It was great. I miss it. Yes, I love the substance, and I also love the style. I know it's very vogue to say, if only he didn't tweet that way. I actually was fine with the tweets, and actually, I miss him. Now, I was there at the very beginning. I'm proud of this, because so many people in the media were there when Donald Trump declared. They may have been there in person, but most actually just watched on TV. Actually, very few were there in person, but you know who was? I'm gonna give you the origins of this show, okay? Where I'm coming from. I was in the room when he declared. It was kind of by accident. I was on my way home. Uh, my co-anchor at the time was friendly with uh, Michael Cohen. There I am, circled, you see? You can tell by my hairline. That is uh, that is me, all right, standing next to Rosanna Scotto. Anyway, I listened to what he had to say. I had no expectations, zero. Shortly afterward, a camera approached. I had no idea who they were, what they uh, were affiliated with. Turned out it was Access Hollywood and Billy Bush, his show. Anyway, this was my first reaction, and I stand by it because I was right. I think he might be a game changer in this race. Listen to that speech. It's going to go over well uh, in certain precincts in Iowa, New Hampshire. This is a big deal. This is not a joke. I felt the earth move almost. I knew everything had changed and everything has changed. And quite frankly, I give myself points for seeing it before basically anybody else, at least in the media world. The people, however, understood. And I feel pretty comfortable with the people because, folks, I'm just people. I did not grow up in the corrupt media culture. I actually grew up, I came of age, if you will, in the United States Marine Corps. People say, thank you for your service. You know what? I say, America, thank you for the experience. 
It was a tremendous privilege to serve in the United States Marine Corps for nine years active duty and a dozen in the reserves. All kinds of experiences that I could never have as a civilian, meeting all kinds of people from all over the country. I'm so grateful to this country, I really am. And if I had not done that, if I had not gone into the Marine Corps, I don't know what I would be today. And I certainly would not, I wouldn't be the, whatever I am. Am I a talk show host? Am I a journalist? I started out as a reporter, a street reporter, and I never felt comfortable actually with the people in the media. They were different. They were certainly different from the folks I served with in the Marine Corps. They were, what, ultra competitive, not very collegial, not very helpful. I just, quite frankly, never fit in. And that's just fine. <laughs> you don't want to fit in with these folks for the most part. There are some nice people, but no, no. And then I went to Iraq again, this time as a reporter. We've seen military vehicles. We've also seen a lot of civilian white pickup trucks come at us almost on suicide missions. Fire returned by Bradley fighting vehicles as well as tanks. So I spent a long time in Iraq, multiple trips, probably nearly a year if you added it all up. And it was quite an experience. And I knew that we should not be there. I actually knew that before, during, and after. Uh, I'm very proud of my coverage. I never chose, I never tried to justify that war, quite frankly, because I knew it was a mistake. It's one of the reasons why I was so taken with President Trump's campaign. He knew that war was a mistake. And in Republican circles, you were not supposed to say that. But he did. Obviously, the war in Iraq was a big, fat mistake, all right? It was a mistake. The war in Iraq, we spent $2 trillion, thousands of lives. We don't even have it. Iran is taking over Iraq with the second largest oil reserves in the world. Obviously, it was a mistake. So. George Bush made a mistake. We so, can make mistakes, but that one was a beauty. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. A thousand percent right. It was a waste of treasure and of lives. And friends of mine lost their lives. And some came back, but forever changed. And then I remember, I'll never forget, I was in the room at the Washington Hilton when George W. Bush crack jokes about not finding weapons of mass destruction. I mean, he should have been panicked, ashamed. Perhaps he should have considered resignation. Instead, he joked about it. Those weapons of mass destruction gotta be somewhere. <laughs> right? Nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> Maybe under here. <laughs> Almost as bad as the jokes, no weapons of mass destruction, and we went to war because of weapons of mass destruction. The laughter in the room, the mainstream media, the elite media laughing their heads off. I knew I did not belong for long with that crowd. And that brings me back to Donald Trump. Again, his fearlessness to take on the establishment and to not worry about the blowback. This is really pure populism. He thinks about the people, not the press, not the elites, it's us. A lot of times you'll have, you'll have, and, and it doesn't work very well. With How tough is it a to lot take of times, property from you, an elderly talk, woman? Let me talk, quiet. How tough a lot is of it? Times, That's all of his donors and special interests out there. <laughs> so, that's what it is. One in a trillion people could handle booze like that. He's that one. <laughs> it's amazing. Most cave, they get nervous, they run, they retreat. He knew what was happening. It's true. The lobbyists, the donors, they were the one. For Jeb Bush, they were the ones. But the people, no. It's actually, we're fortunate to be alive right now and witnessing this kind of leadership. Uh, not in office now, but I think he's coming back.